Now, Miss Bobby Reynolds, why did you run when you saw me back there? Because you've neglected me shamefully for the past six days, Mr. Cardigan. Then you've missed me. I have not. Are you sure? Oh, Ron, of course I've missed you. And I've missed you every minute I've been away. I wouldn't have gone, but the other boys in the pool wanted a survey made of their cattle, so I had to do it. Well, of course you did. You're the only one who could be trusted with a job like that. Now, don't you be putting big ideas in my head. <laughs> How did the survey turn out? Not so good. A lot of the cattle were shagged off into the rough country, which will make the roundup a tough job. I doubt if all our stock together would tally as much as your father has in his big herd. I see he's already started his roundup. Well, when he brought on the new men, he fired almost all of the old ones. And those new men, I don't like them, and Dad won't tell me why he's hiring them. He seems so, well, so worried about something. I reckon hiring them is your dad's business. But as to you not liking them, <laughs> that suits me. No, Lon, I'm serious about this. Don't you remember before you went away, he made Bull Burke his foreman? You said then that Bull wasn't fit to take care of either horses or men, and you were right. What does it all mean, Lon? Come on. I'll ride home with you. Maybe we'll run into him. Healy! Is my father back yet? No. Take care of my horse, will you? I wasn't hired to do that. No, please. That's the kind of men who've taken the places of the old ones. I see. I'll take care of your horse. Another reason I wanted to see you was to thank you for hiring old Calico Haynes after Bull discharged him. You needn't thank me for that. He's a darn good cook. <laughs> You'd have hired him even if he wasn't. Sure I would. Especially since he was fired for telling Bull what he thought of him. Thank you, Lon. Now, don't you worry, honey. Your father knows what he's doing. I'm sure he does. But it's why he's doing it that worries me. I reckon your father and I should have one of those old-time powwows. I think you should, too. See you tomorrow. Bye-bye. Calico, come on out. What do you mean by hiding in the brush giving snake imitations? Reynolds and that gun playing informer over here heard you's back. They waiting for it to house. No law against that, is there? Say, why don't you stop looking for trouble? Whenever my left shoulder starts to pain me, I know there's going to be trouble. You get on back up there and rustle me some grub. I am hungry. I know. Uh, you go on. I'm going to keep them covered with old Betsy. She barks every time you speak to her. <laughs> Howdy, Jen. Hello, Lyle. So what am I indebted for this honor? I heard you were back, so I drifted over to have a talk. Fine. Come in. Go right ahead, Mr. Reynolds, while I wash some of this country off of me. Well, I won't take it. You can put off that scrubbing. Get it off your chest. I'm listening. Lon, what would you say if I get off my ranch, quit seeing Bobby? What would you do? What would I say? I'd say a couple of things, Mr. Reynolds. One is that you have every right to say who comes and goes on your ranch. But whether I see Bobby or not depends upon her, she being over 21. You're talking mighty big. I'm thinking you ought to learn manners in addressing your betters. Me talking big? Well, you haven't heard anything. And as far as my betters, I hope you're not aiming to include yourself among them. Oh, smart, Alec, huh? Well, go with me. I ain't minded to take slack jaw from your kind. Take it or leave it. But you better file the beat off that gun before you draw it on me. Oh, yeah? 
I suppose you think you're so fast I can't spot you to a little sight drag and beat you to the smoke, huh? Wrong again. I was just thinking you'd better file it off so it won't rip you wide open when I ram it down your throat. That's enough, Bull. You've given your opinion plenty of air. What about it? Business. Now how much beef you got under your iron? A hundred head, more or less. Why? Not much to bring a woman to. I don't want Bobby killing herself like her mother had to. Yes, and your mother too, Lon. You grew. So will I. And with Bobby helping me, I intend to make something out of it. Fair enough. But it's a long, uphill fight. You've got youth and energy. And it's a shame to waste them on a spread like this. Suppose you throw in your stuff with mine. I'll give you a job as wagon boss, 60 a month, and whatever the increase in your herd amounts to. Big ideas and a little outfit just don't go together. How about it? All right, Mr. Reynolds. I'm your man. Come over tomorrow, son, and we'll work out the details. I'll be there. I think it came from that direction. Your new cow boss has got things under control. Come on, let's be on our way. What's that thing doing here? Looks like a section corner to me. But who put it there? Who's been around here while I was away? Nobody. Nobody at all. Oh, except a couple of fellas with a queer looking contraption. It looked like one of them uh, telescope things. You mean surveyor? Yeah, that's it. I know it had something to do about looking. I wonder what it means. Well, we'll soon find out. Let's see if we can pick up any sign of the armor that fired that shot. I figured it came from about over there. And he used a 30-30. There's his tracks. He got on his horse and went over that hill. It was a poor shot. Well, it's getting too late to trail him. I'll have a go at it in the morning. Say, what did I hire you for? For me? What, the cook? Well, get to it. Yeah. Here, that way. Oh, we do live over there. He ain't no good gonna come and you trailing whoever fired that shot yesterday. Why? Was he a friend of yours? Well, if he meant it for Bull Burke, he was. Even if he did miss. This range is no place for bushwhackers. Well, he wouldn't have been the bushwhacker. If he'd have got Bull. Maybe he was gunning for Mr. Reynolds. He being my new boss, I ought to look into it. I got full bit says he'll never boss you. What do you mean by that? Just one of my hunches.
No title, you say. Me and Mary starved and slaved for this bit of land. We lived here before there was a cow in the country. Built the first cabin in the valley. And have been here ever since. That's title enough for me. You'll find out how much title there is. What's wrong, Murdoch? Long? These hombres is trying to run a sandy on me. They're telling me we ain't got no right to live here. What do you care what they say? It's too thin to get up a sweat over. Is it necessary to stir up folk by running your survey lines? Just where do you fit in, anyway? Doesn't look like we do. Why don't we? We're surveying the Reynolds Range, and this is part of it. You haven't made a deal to sell out, have you? Sell? Of course I ain't. No even talking about selling. Things has been happening since you went away, Lon. Yesterday, Jeff Reynolds come here with that gun-toting foreman of his. Told me he had bought the whole valley and was sending surveyors in here to run the line. Asked me not to interfere. I run him out of here and rode off toward your place. Oh, don't get so riled. I always trusted Reynolds, but he's changed. And he's up to something mighty crooked now. Take it easy. Maybe there's a misunderstanding that straight talk can unravel. Suppose you gents come clean on what you're doing. There's no reason why we can't talk this over. We tried that on this old Longhorn, but nobody could tell him nothing. Now, here's the idea. Land on this side of the valley has been selected by the state as Lou land. What's Lou land? They're lands the state treasure the government out of, in place of school lands. They advertise them, then they put them up at auction. Reynolds bet them in, paid for them. Got a deed. That makes him owner of the whole valley. Just where was this sale advertised? In Lordsburg. Lordsburg? There's nobody around here gets the paper from there. Sure not. That's why it was advertised there. Why, well, what's the difference? All the other guys couldn't raise enough cash to bid it in. Reynolds couldn't. He owns it. And yours along with it. Lon, if Reynolds has done this, I know a cottonwood tree that'll be bearing cold fruit. Go to it, old-timer. Anytime you're ready to decorate trees, you're plumb welcome. Now, cut that talk. Every man in this valley has legal rights. If this land has been taken away from us, the court will get it back. Talk's cheap. It takes money to buy land. Reynolds expects a fight and is ready for it. Go on running your lines there. Now, you listen to me. You're running way ahead of your shadow. This business may be as you say, but I doubt it. Yesterday, Jeff Reynolds appointed me as cattle boss, and I'm ordering you back to the ranch until this trouble is settled. I'm taking orders from nobody but Bo Burke. And if you'll take that hog leg off, I'll take your orders. That suits me. I've been wanting to meet up with you again. Here, Tug. Stand back, Murdoch. Pick him up, and take him and your gadgets out of this valley. We'll be back, but we won't come alone. When you come, you better all wear skin shirts. Now get going. Lon, are you hurt? Is it true that you're working for Reynolds? Not if he's doing what they claim he is. You sure plastered that bully, Lon. I was keeping them others covered. Thanks, partner. Will they take our home away from us? How can they? We've got squatter rights, even though we haven't filed. Now, don't you worry, Mrs. Murdoch. Come on, Mary. If any of them fellows that have made a move, I'd let them have it. Gunfighting is a man's job, Tug. And the time's come when I've got to use this gun. You're just a kid. If you let the talk steer you into a killing, why, it'll brand you with a mark that'll never heal. You ought to saw the butt off of that gun and throw the barrel in the creek. Not me. Before I get done, partner, I'm going to square things with that Jeff Reynolds for the things he said to my ma. If I couldn't do a better job of it than you did yesterday, I'd turn it over to somebody else. Might have known I couldn't have fooled you none. I missed all right. Because this old 30-30 pa gave me, he's the dog filed. But I won't miss next time, because I did the filing today. Well, that's wrong, Tug. Trying to shoot a man in the back. Rules don't apply to that man. 
He should have been here yesterday. He ordered us out of our cabin and then left when I tried to stop him. And then that foreman slapped me down. Well, you ought to give it up anyway. This fight can't be settled by killing Jeff Reynolds. I'm not so sure about that. Even if it could be, you're not the one to do it. Taking a human life is a big contract for any man, let alone a kid like you. Now listen, if we're going to continue to be partners, you've got to give up this bushwhacking. Will you? All right, if you say so. That's fine. And I know you'll do it because you've never broken your word to me yet. Now all you've got to do is to keep your eyes open, and when you see anything, you come to me and we'll work it out together. Well. Okay. And Cardigan claims there'll be no cow boss here. Yeah, I know all about that. He won't last long enough to draw his first wages. I told Mr. Porter all about it. He'll take care of it just like he does everything else. talk about the job. We'll talk all right, but it won't be about the job. Well, uh, let's get inside anyhow. Have a seat. Smoke? No, thanks. What's on your mind, Lonnie? I've heard a lot of things since I got back that are hard to believe. And I won't believe them until I give you a chance to deny them. Well, what are they, Lon? Mainly this, that you bought the whole valley by a legal trick and are going to evict the people on the east side. Well, what if I did buy it? If I can get it cheap, it's my right, isn't it? You mean you're going to rob your neighbors of all they have in the world, even if you have to spill blood to do it? The law's back of me. If the folks want to fight, it's their law. If you thought you could bribe me by offering me that job, you were wrong. You're making a big mistake if you turn it down. You're making a bigger one, and I do turn it down. You've got hired killers to do your dirty work, so you don't need me. I'm sorry, Lon. I meant it for your own good. Then you're going through with this deal? Let me go after him. Ah, there's no rush. When Porter gives the word, that hombre's the first guy on my list. What are you doing here, Bobby? Daddy told me you were going to work for him, so I came over to help you pack. It's all off. When he offered me that job and a chance to run my cattle with his, it made me happy. When I work for a man, he's got to be on the level. On the level? Well, Lon, whatever's come over you? You know him better than most, and you know he's on the level. I thought he was, until he told me he'd bought this whole valley and it's going to evict all the people here. Well, you must be mad. Well, he's mortgaged to the limit now from buying that range last summer. He couldn't take on anything else if he wanted to. I don't blame you for standing up for your father. But if he goes through with what he says, men are going to die. I don't believe you. And ask him why he is having this valley surveyed and throwing the fear of guns into folks. Didn't he go to Lordsburg last week? Yes. Well, ask him what he was doing there. And when he tells you the answers, if he does, you tell him he's going to have a fight on his hands. It's bad enough for you to say those things about him, but it's worse for you to believe them. I don't know why you're saying them, but... But I hate you, Ron Cardigan. I 
told you I'd bet you four bits that Reynolds would never boss you. What do you know about this? Nothing yet, but I expect a lot. Well, tell me. Now, I got a reputation for shooting off my mouth now. But this time, I'm going to keep it plumb shut and work out things by thinking. What are you going to do? I'm going to ride over to see Mr. Holbrook. I've got to talk with somebody that's got a good head. Yeah, that is huh? Well, you'll be needing good guns more than good head. And I got old bitch you all filled up red to black. And she barks every time you speak to her. I needn't have gone on that survey for all the good of it and come back here and find this. The boys in the pool don't see no way out but fighting, Lon. I know they don't, Mr. Holbrook, but it's my idea that a fight would spoil everything before we could explain our case to the proper authorities. It'll come to that sooner or later, and when it does, the law won't be on our side. Will you go to Lordsburg and look up the record of filing and verify the sale? Sure. Not that I think it will do any good. I'll see the other boys and try to keep them from starting anything. When did you get back? Noon, day after tomorrow. Good. Come to my place. I'll have the others there. All right. I'll be leaving right away. I ain't standing for nobody surveying my land. See how much they can take away from me. You can't stop them with gunfire, Brown. Wait till we see what Holbrook finds out. Well, if it is anybody but you asking it, Lon, I wouldn't wait a minute. Good. Be at my place the after tomorrow at noon. If there is any loophole, Holbrook will find it. Now be at my place. All right. We'll be there. Howdy, boys. What have you been up to? Snooping around, adding up two and two, but it still comes out six. Here comes Holbrook. What did you find out, Holbrook? What about my place? Learn anything? Folks were up against it. Not one of us has made a filing of those that took the land before us. Our land has been duly advertised by the state, sold on the courthouse steps and paid for. The title rights are now in the name of... We know who it is. Jeff Reynolds. Yeah, Go on and say it. Yeah. You're right. Jeff Reynolds. He owns this valley from ridge to ridge. We're out 30 days after eviction notices are posted. We are not out until we are down. Not until the last cartridge is spent. And some of the Reynolds stripe are too dead to enjoy their loot. I'm for riding after him right now. Who's with me? We're all with you. Been with you right along, Murdoch. Let's, let's start now. Out on Let's get going. Hold on, folks. Let's don't let wild talk make us lose our heads. Let Mr. Holbrook tell us what else you found out. What about it? Have we any rights left at all? We've got squatters rights, but we're too late to file on them. I went to see a lawyer, and he told me that we might contest the sale and get it thrown out. And he wanted $1,000 before he'd turn a wheel. Well, I can buy a heap of cartridges for a thousand dollars. But ain't that much money in the whole pool. If it comes to gun smoke, those of us that aren't killed will end up in jail. Let's round up everything we can and start shipping. We've got squatter rights and the law will protect us. If I had a thousand dollars, I wouldn't trust it to the law shark. Before he gets started, we'd be ousted and our places burned. While you're talking, Lon, suppose you tell us which side you're on. I still remember you saying Reynolds hired you as his wagon boss. That way, you've got nothing to lose one way or the other. But me, I'd sure admire to know, am I going to fight with you or against you? I'm not taking Reynolds' job. But if there's a peaceful way of settling this, I'm for it. I reckon I know how you feel about it, Lon. There's none of us that likes this business, but they're crowding us into it. There's some of those on every one of our places. Folks who did their bit. To earn what right we've got here in the valley. 
They'll be riding at our stir. We can't let them down, can we? All right. Put it to a vote. All right, boys. Have your say out loud as I call each man's name, so we'll know where you stand. Will it be fight and maybe die for our rights, or go to the law and starve to death? What do you say, Brown? I'm back in my bets with the business end of a gun. How about you, Murdoch? Well, what's the use of vote? Why not make it unanimous to fight? That's what we've been waiting for. I've been wanting to get back and running for a long time. We'll show them where we stand. Well, that's the spirit, boys. Well, I'll stick with you. How about you, Lon? I'll fight with you to the finish. We know it, Lon. That's talking. There'll be plenty of others on Boot Hill. Yeah, and we'll put some more there. You better you better you. Come on, we'll show that thing. A young army of gunfighters. Keep a close watch. We're counting on you to give us warning of their first move. troubling you so. Why, nothing, Bobby. What do you mean? It is something. If Mr. Porter's just buying cattle from you, as you say, why do you act like this every time he comes here? You wouldn't understand. Porter is a, well, he's a difficult man to deal with. It'd be very hard to explain. see Calico, you tell him that my own cooking doesn't agree with me. I can't imagine what's got into that old coot. I saw him this morning, riding all alone, lugging that big can in his. What is that, Porter? Calico Haynes. Hey, old fool, put down that gun. So you recognize me, do you, Porter? Well, I've been a-wishing for a chance like this at you ever since you skinned me out of my ranch down there in Arizona. Get off your horse. Suppose I don't. If old Betsy barks a load of lead in you, it'll be a paying job to melt you down. Get off. Uh-huh. I was suspicious when I first saw you at Reynolds. You was behind all this. I don't know what you're talking about. Says you. But I do. Now see if you're talking anything else. Aha! Uh -huh. You'll go to jail for this. Well, I wouldn't mind if they put me in the same cell as you. Now you get moving, you fishy-eyed skin full of lard. And stay out of this alley. If you want us to hold hide and healthy, now get.
look at this. It's a deed signed by Jeff Reynolds to John Porter for the whole east side of this valley. Who's John Porter? A land hog and the biggest crook out of jail. Don't you see? Some way he's making Reynolds do his dirty work for him. Where are you going? I'm going to convince the little lady that I was right. Is that all you want of that deed? Give it to you. Now quit worrying. Nobody's going to use it but me. Me and old Betsy will see that nobody does. Where's your father? He's gone for a ride. Mr. Porter, whatever you and Dad are doing... You keep out of what's none of your business. The other side have started things. You take the boys out and finish them. Leave a couple of them here. I may need them. Right. I hit leather. Steely, Joe McGee, stay here. Now, what do you reckon they're up to? We'll worry about them later. Come on. Mom, those gunmen, they've gone out and... I saw them. Now, you take a look at this. That deed ought to prove what your father is doing. There must be some mistake. Let's go to Dad. He'll tell us what it's all about, and he'll undo it. That document don't go no such place. It served its purpose. All right. You can go if you want to, but I'm going to trail them gunmen. I want you to sign another deed. Why? Never mind why. You'll do as I say. I, I don't understand. You're not supposed to. Come on inside. You think you can double cross me? You picked the wrong man. You keep on going.
Stand fast, hombres. Take their guns, Bobby. Dad's here. There's his horse. Get inside. Get over there and stay quiet. What does this mean? Dad, we've got to talk to you. I've got a matter to settle with Mr. Porter first. It's already been settled, Mr. Reynolds. Cardigan, I warn you, these outlaw tactics of yours will get you jailed. Bobby, you're mixing into something that doesn't concern you. Leave here until we're finished. If you make me leave this room now, you'll never see me again. Well, what's come over you? Dad, it's time you and I understood each other. What does this all mean? Bobby's right, Mr. Reynolds. Why are you deeding that land over to Porter? Try and save my ranch. I mortgaged it to Porter to buy that new land last summer. Now he wants the whole valley. And he'll foreclose on me if I don't get him the title to the east side. Don't you see why he's doing that, Mr. Reynolds? He's just using you as a front. Why, he'd sacrifice you in a minute, knowing your ranch is his. Lon's right, Dad. He's got proof. Even if we lose the ranch, give the land back to the people it belongs to. I believe you, Lon. But it looked like a way for me to save my ranch and lay something aside for Bobby. I'll do it. I'll break you if you do. Go ahead. I'm through. Don't be a fool. Come on, we'll find Bull and the boys. Get your horse. Hold on. I'm going to sign the land back to those who own it, then I can look them straight in the eyes again. Place. You'd better stay here with your dad. Right for the boys, Tug. We'll try and stand them off. I can't go now. This is my home. You've got to. They're stopping. Hey, Bull, come with me. Now, why do you suppose they branched off like that? They're going after Reynolds. Get going, Tug. Round up the boys and meet at my place. Calico? We'll trail that bunch.
What do we do? Depends upon what their next move is. Bull, go on with your job. I've got business to finish with Reynolds. McGee, you ain't got to stay here with me. Porter is going to make Reynolds sign that deed. We've got to get in there. I'll blast the way in. Wait a minute. Come on. Sit down, Mr. Reynolds. Let's get this over with. It won't take long. I told you, Porter, that I'm not going through with it. Oh, yes, you will. Gee, you'd better get outside and keep watch. Right. again, Porter. I told you this deal was off. Let's see, here's your chance to bark. Mom! That fellow outside got away. He'd be bringing the others here. Mr. Reynolds, you and Bobby get outside. I've got to leave you here, but I'm not through with you yet. You can bet you're not. Head for my place. Well, it won't be so hard to find him. Come on. Special shells. I want to find old Betsy again. Lon, if I don't come through this, I'll write out a deed to you for all my holdings. Now, don't you worry about that. We can send them off till the boys get here. Here they come. Cover those front windows. Men surround the place. The party. Why, it's tugging the boys. So, 
going in. Why couldn't they wait until I give old Betsy another chance? There goes Porter. Don't let that skunk get away. Don't worry, I won't. Porter, you're going with me. You nothing on me. Everything I did was perfectly legal. That's what you thought. Reynolds, I still have your ranch. It ain't going to do you a better good where you're going. Come on. If you see anything of an old codger named Calico Haynes, tell him Mr. Porter here wants to swear out a warrant against him for a highway robbery.